Anatoly Yunitsky's article Historical Background of the Spaceway Program as the only way to sustainable development of the technocratic civilization, performed by Michael Kirichenko. According to current estimates, there are about 14 billion species of living beings on the Earth nowadays. Moreover, the number of described species that is known to science is 1,750,000. This is only 12.5% of the estimated. Every hour, about three species of living creatures disappear from the Earth. There is more than 70 species extinct daily, more than 26,000 per year. Some of them extinct due to the natural reasons, that is how the evolution works, but most living creatures extinct due to anthropogenous factors. These species disappear from the planet forever. That is irretrievable. But the nature has created these forms of life not for extinguishing by someone. They are unique. The most state-of-the-art engineering decisions are a far cry from the pieces of the creator's technology. Not only any living creature, not only any of its organ or any of its single cell are unimaginably complex, but even its single tiny brick, a DNA macromolecule that contains genetic information. A man has about 100,000 of genes. It's hundreds of thousands times more complex than, for example, a Boeing. An aircraft is composed of several millions of parts. This organic macromolecule contains hundreds of billions of parts, atoms of dozens of chemical elements from the periodic table, structured into an unusually complex and reliable structure, proven by millions of years of evolution and also capable of self-reproduction. The number of cases of allergies, cancer, lung and cardiovascular diseases as well as genetic disorders and hereditary human diseases caused by water, air and soil pollution is growing rapidly on our planet. There are irreversible changes in the landscape and soils, forests disappear, rivers cease and oceans become polluted. The ozone layer, which protects all living beings from the destructive hard radiation of the sun, is intensively depleted. There are many causes of negative changes in the biosphere of the air. But what is the primary cause of these processes? Only by understanding this, one can avoid the degradation of the biosphere and the humankind as one of the biological species, and also determine the ways to harmonious development of our Earth techno-civilization in the future. According to the modern concepts, life originated on the Earth about 4 billion years ago. While developing and adapting to the conditions that existed on the planet in those times, living organisms began to transform the environment. These transformations were as great as those that occurred with living organisms as they developed and improved. Thus, the oxygen-containing atmosphere appeared on the planet, which was dead and desert in the beginning, as well as living fertile soil, coral islands, the ozone layer, the modern natural landscape with its savannas and forest steppes, swamps and tundra, taiga and jungle appeared. Thus the biosphere appeared, where millions of species of living organisms and the planet transformed by them over billions of years are ideally fitted to each other. And there is nothing superfluous in the biosphere. One should pay special attention to the fact that the entire biosphere of the Blue Planet is created from the waste and on the basis of waste produced by living organisms. Oxygen and accordingly ozone are waste of photosynthetic bacteria and green plants, fertile soil and humus. All of these died at one time and passed through someone's stomach and intestines, including soil microorganisms and earthworms. But then a man appeared, who, owing to his mind, began to strengthen the power of his muscles, organs and sense and intelligence, began to create technologies, began to master technological processes. This happened a long time ago, hundreds of thousands of years ago, when primitive people just began to manufacture the first primitive tools, and then began to cook food on the fire 
to process animal skins in their home, the cave. And they died of lung cancer at the age of 20, as there was smog in their houses. But they survived, as they guessed of removing technologies from their home to the environment, the biosphere. And the planet's biosphere has become a home for the nascent civilization. Not even a home, but a single room that does not have partitions. It was then that the humankind chose the technological way of development. And we cannot change it today. The modern industrial power of the Earth's civilization is only a logical development of a technocratic way. Homo sapiens, having united into local societies and then, when industry merged into a planetary civilization, has now become qualitatively different. Homo technocraticus. In the 21st century, the Homo technocraticus actually narrowed down to the concept of the asphalt man, since most people began to live in cities. And there is a huge area that is covered by asphalt on our planet. The size of this area equal to the area of five Great Britons. This soil is dead. It does not have green plants on it that produce oxygen necessary for human breathing. The soils situated in areas which are ten times larger and adjacent to roads are degraded and polluted with carcinogens from exhaust gases and tire wear, as well as asphalt products. The world's roads, that are more than 30 million kilometers long, annually kill about 1.5 million people on the planet and make much more people disabled and crippled. Moreover, traffic accidents are the eighth leading cause of death worldwide and, most importantly, the main cause of death for children aged 5 to 14 years and young people aged 15 to 29 years. And how many billions of animals, domestic and wild, large and small, they kill, no one even knows. Cars burn more than 2.2 billion tons of fuel annually passing more than 35 billion tons of life-giving air through high-temperature combustion, burning more than 7 billion tons of oxygen out of the atmosphere. This amount of oxygen is produced, for example, by pine forest covering an area of 240 million hectares per year. Plants, factories, power stations, machine tools, Automobiles and other engineering equipment of the technosphere created by Technohuman are analogs of living organisms in the biosphere. And they, like living organisms, exchange energy, information and matter with the environment. Therefore, like organisms, they must inevitably transform the surrounding nature. Technogenic pollution of the environment occurs only from the point of view of biology. From a technical point of view, machines, factories, plants, power stations and transport vehicles do not pollute anything. At the entrance they have raw materials, at the exit the finished product or service, for example, energy, information or transport, and the converted raw materials, excluding the finished product or service, which, naturally, goes to the same place where it was taken from, to the environment. To avoid this is impossible in principle. It is also fundamentally impossible to create closed, absolutely green engineering technological cycles that environmentalists dream of in order to solve all environmental problems on the planet in this way. This is about the same as looking for a way to ban a cow along with the products we need, meat and milk, to produce waste as well, urine, manure, methane, and CO2. Even the biosphere as a whole cannot be called a closed system. It is an open system and that is why it transformed the previously dead Earth. Only an Earth biosphere system is closed. But even this system is not completely closed, since it absorbs the energy of the Sun and cosmic radiation, cosmic dust and meteoritic matter and radiates technogenic light into outer space at night and it produces radio emission around the clock. Even the whole technosphere, and not a single machine, factory or plant in a single taken planet, cannot be a closed system. The technosphere will inevitably transform the planet and its biosphere. But which way? Technosphere does not need an oxygen-containing atmosphere. Therefore, for example, today, 
The industry and transport of the USA already consume more oxygen than its green plants produce on the territory of this country. Americans live in debt. They consume oxygen produced by the Russian taiga and the Amazon jungle. The technosphere also does not need a live fertile soil. Therefore, the planet has less and less fertile lands and more and more dumps, slag, ash and terry cans. But a healthy fertile soil, such as black soil, in a kilogram of which about a trillion microorganisms of several thousands of species live, is inherently the immune system of the entire Earth's biosphere. This is where the food chain begins for most living organisms on the planet and all viral diseases, including the most deadly ones, and here. It is microorganisms, each type of which has its own specialization, that create universal nutrition for plants, humus. All sorts of insoluble humic acid salts, otherwise rain and ground waters would wash out all plant food from the soil. Other types of microorganisms open this original canned food, organic compounds, which contain the entire set of chemical elements necessary for life, about 80 from the periodic table, in the form of thousands of specific and very complex organic compounds and not simple chemical compounds such as chemical fertilizers. That is, the humus is converted into a soluble form and thus the plants are fed. But a man began to kill the soil microflora and microfauna. That is the immune system of the biosphere by plowing and mineral fertilizers, herbicides and pesticides, asphalt and terricones. And very soon the biosphere of the planet will become like an AIDS patient with a weakened immune system that can die from previously harmless disease. Acid rains, smog, increased levels of radiation, destruction of the ozone layer of the planet, etc. All these things are consequences of the industry existence. It is possible only to slow down the process of transformation of the Earth nature and the biosphere. But it cannot be stopped. The technosphere occupies the same ecological niche as the biosphere itself. Machines, transport vehicles, mechanisms, technical devices are located in the midst of the Earth, water, air, and actively interact with them. Environmental problems have recently become aggravated only because the power supply capacity of technosphere, that is, its capacity to transform the environment, has approached to the biosphere on the whole. For example, in the process of photosynthesis, the biosphere now reproduces about 150 billion tons of dry organic matter per year, which, in terms of fuel, is only by an order of magnitude more than the annual energy consumption of all the equipment available to our civilization. And the volumes of soil, coal, ore and other types of raw materials transported and processed by various equipment are already very close to the volume of production of organic matter in the biosphere. From a biological point of view, the humankind as a species of living beings is a child, whom the biosphere gave birth to with a total biomass of about 500 million tons, about 350 million tons, of these 500 million are water. And it does not pose any danger to planetary ecology, as the total mass of living matter in the biosphere is about 2.5 trillion tons, of which about 1.8 trillion tons are water. And the mass of the mankind is less than 0.02% of it. So metabolism and homeostasis of civilization as a community of people, as an open biological system, are less significant for the planet's biosphere than any mold that has a larger total mass. Global problems are actually created by the homeostasis of a completely different child, the one that was born by a Homo technocraticus. And this child is called the industry. It grows very quickly. Its appetite is steadily increasing. And its mass, in many respects it is useless industrial fat, approaches the mass of living matter on the planet. Recently, another culprit of global warming 
has been discovered. A Bitcoin. The cost of electricity to maintain a non-optimal Bitcoin payment system already accounts for about 1% of the total world energy. One transaction requires as much energy as an average family spends per month in the Netherlands. If the growth rates remain, and the essence of this non-optimal information technology does not change, then, in the short-term perspective, mining will consume up to 100% of the global electricity production. Thus, not only material substances associated with the processing, but also information technologies are causing more and more tangible environmental damage. Although the information itself is not material, it is stored and processed on tangible media, and that in fact creates environmental problems. There is only one cardinal way out of the current situation. It is necessary to provide the technosphere with an ecological niche outside the biosphere. This will ensure the preservation and development of the biosphere according to the laws and directions that have been formed during billions of years of evolution, as well as this will ensure harmonious interaction of the people community as biological objects with the biosphere. There is no such ecological niche for the technosphere on the Earth. But there is such a niche in near space, at a distance of 300 to 500 kilometers from the surface of the planet, where ideal conditions exist for most technological processes – weightlessness, vacuum, ultra-high and cryogenic temperatures, unlimited raw materials, energy and spatial resources, etc. Thus, the conclusion is that it is necessary to industrialize space if in the future the Earth civilization will continue following the technological way of development. The mankind does not have much time for the large-scale space exploration. According to a variety of predictions, due to the technocratic oppression of the biosphere, its irreversible degradation, and correspondently degradation of the human race will begin in two generations. This will become the point of no return for the technocratic civilization of the Earth type. No measures will help it to turn back. The humankind has no experience in the near-Earth space industrialization. And what should be the space industry? What are its functions? What are the volumes and types of the goods produced? Where will these products be mainly consumed? In the space or in the Earth? There are a lot of questions. And there are no clear answers today. Any answer can be right and wrong at the same time, as everything will depend on those specific development ways concerning large-scale space exploration chosen by the Earth civilizations in the future. Indeed, the above-mentioned objective reasons, environmental constraints, exhaustion of the Earth's raw materials, energy, spatial and other resources, the danger of overheating of the atmosphere, and global adverse climate changes, etc., should remove the sphere of material production almost entirely into the space in the future. At the same time, humans as a biological species, like any other species of living organisms on our planet, are the product of 4 billion years of evolution under the Earth's conditions. We are ideally tailored to the Earth's gravity, to the magnetic and electric fields of the Earth, to the Earth's air saturated with phytoncytes of flowering plants, to the Earth's spring water containing the micro-elements we need, to Earth foods grown on the Earth's fertile soil, and much more Earth's things we do not even suspect about, but without which we cannot exist not only today, but also in the foreseeable future. There is no place in the vast universe for us, people of Earth. There is no place in the vast universe for us, people of Earth, more suitable than our beautiful blue planet. Therefore, the main consumers of future space industry products, and this is about 10 billion people, will be on the Earth. Space industrialization means creations of conditions on orbit for production of various materials, energy machines, obtaining new information, implementation of technological processes and scientific experiments. Consequently, 
Significant traffic is inevitable between the consumer of material products, humans living on the planet, and the production of these products placed on the Earth orbit as close as possible to the consumer in order to improve geocosmic logistics. Since a human being is primarily material, his consumption of products both supporting his life – food, water, air, etc. – and industrial – a telephone, computer, refrigerator, TV car, etc. – is related to his anthropometric characteristic – size – average height of a person is 1.75 meters – and body weight – average 62 kilograms. Therefore, the annual per capita consumption of industrial products in the future should be commensurate with the mass of a man. For 10 billion of people, this figure is at least 100 million tons per year, or 10 kilograms per individual. The bottleneck of the coming space industrialization, when the Earth civilization can become a truly cosmic one, is geocosmic transport. Even according to the most ambitious forecasts, the well-known geocosmic transport systems, launch vehicles, space elevator, electromagnetic gun, etc., are capable of transporting only a few thousand tons of cargo per year along the Earth orbit Earth route, which is tens of thousands of times less than it is required, less than one gram per each inhabitant of the planet per year. If we were, for example, a civilization of micro Lilliputians, and weight about one gram, then such volume of transportation would suit us perfectly. But for a civilization of the Earth's type, this is unacceptable. If solutions to this problem will not be found in the near future, our Earth's technocratic civilization will suffer the same fate as mold in a petri dish after having eaten all the limited resources and having poisoned the limited space with its waste products, it will die. It is only a matter of time, but it will happen, sooner or later.